My name is Tang Gang Zhong. Today, we're going to talk about the Kepler Space Telescope. The image on the left shows you the 3D rendered model of the telescope. An interesting fact is the telescope was actually named after a very famous German astronomer by the name Johannes Kepler. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the brief history of the Kepler Space Telescope. It was launched by NASA back in 2009, March, of, uh, March 7th, until it was decommissioned in 2018, November 15th. After its launch, the telescope was placed in a heliocentric orbit. Now what that means is the telescope was actually revolving around the sun. During its functioning time, the telescope dis um, observed approximately 500,000 stars in our Milky Way galaxy, and in doing so, it discovered about 4,000 exoplanets. Now apparently the telescope is located in space, and it is at an average distance of one astronomical unit from the Earth. And, it, and it's actually in a wider heliocentric orbit compared to Earth. So according to Newton's law of gravitation is actually moving at a lower orbital speed. So the telescope is actually trailing behind the Earth over time. One of the reasons for choosing space as the telescope's location is the apparent lack of atmosphere between the telescope and the observed stars. So the telescope operates um, with a spectral band pass of 400 to 850 nanometers and that constitutes of the visible spectrum. So since it's operating with instruments that detect visible light, the instruments are relatively cheaper compared to um, the instruments that detect, uh, for example, gamma rays and x-rays. Since uh, the visible spectrum is used, Space is a good place for the telescope because light is less likely to be scattered. So the images are less likely to be distorted. Hi everyone, I'm Linton and I'll continue on from Zor's presentation. Aboard the Kepler telescope is a Schmidt camera as well as a focal plane array for um, image capturing. The telescope contains 25 modules, 24, 21 of them are for making measurements and 4 of them are controlling the movement of the telescope. And um, it also contains few platinum lenses, which is part of processing to make the images finer. The Kepler, Kepler telescope um, intends to investigate planets, diameter and surface temperature. So the measurements made are the orbital period of planet, size of its host star, brightness of host star over time, and uh, planet's orbital radius. Okay, um, as the planet comes in between us and the host star, it blocks light. So um, the host star to us appears dimmer than um, dimmer at that period. But as the planet uh, moves to other positions, the host star uh, appears brighter and brighter. So this happens periodically and we can use the time taken to measure the orbital period of uh, the star, the planet. Also to, me um, to measure the surface temperature of the planet, uh, orbital radius and um, the host um, star's temperature is observed. The further away the planet is from the host star, the cooler its surface temperature. Okay, so um, Kepler underwent two missions from 2009 to 2018. The first mission hunted um, habitable terrestrial exoplanets. It also uh, measured the number of um, planets in multi-star systems as well as to investigate the properties of um, giant planets and stars that have um, planetary systems orbiting them. 
the second mission um, is rather different. So um, the second mission searched for binary stars, hot gas giants near young stars, as well as potentially habitable planets. Hello everyone, I'm Sahajo. You can call me Kevin. Um, today I want to talk something about the justification for the Kepler Space Telescope project. I want to talk these five three main points first. Hopefully, uh, as we all know, or in fact, um, the space program will cost lots of money, also lots of time. So even for a very strong country just like America, it will also cause a huge amount of this. But uh, this will not only be a cost, not only be a expense, it also will be a very good profit in the future. Uh, because of the different structure in the different planets, uh, some real metals in the Earth will be not real in the other planets. So maybe 100 years later, we can find a cheaper way to get other planets and get that great profit. And second, politically, um, in this world, in this world, there are lots of countries here, and they all have their own mind, their own considers. But sometimes their considers, their mind will not be the same. It will, it may cause some bad things, even a war in the world. So if we have a common goal to achieve, just like a space uh, program, uh, they can be a very healthy union. Uh, we can build a healthy uh, country strengths. And finally, scientifically, by research on NASA, um, every 10,000 years there will be a meteorite impact on Earth. So if we have a space telescope project, we can get some valuable expense in time to deal with it. It's well very important. So these three are three main reasons why we should pay more attention of the telescope project. To sum up, Kepler Telescope completed two missions in space operating in the visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum. During its lifetime, the telescope discovered thousands of exoplanets. And on top of that, with a growing endeavor for planetary colonization, the telescope prepares us for that.